encourage well, you. Well, it's so. time um, to start our final part of tonight's session. And let's discuss uh, some um, questions related to self-organized art initiatives in the streets. So I would like to invite Tanya Sushenkova, Nikolai Moroz, Maxim Ilyuhin, Natasha Struchkova. I also hope that everyone who uh, is uh, here will uh, have a chance to say something and participate in this discussion. Um, all those initiatives have uh, some uh, distinctive characteristics and uh, my hypothesis uh, uh, can now be confirmed because every speaker today said that uh, there are two important factors in their self-organized uh, initiatives. Uh, first factor is horizontal uh, nature of their um, uh, management. Uh, there must always be someone who is pushing this process forward, uh, who is stimulating others uh, for action, and it's true. Um, uh, if there is a, if uh, there is an exhibition in the apartment, then the main person would be the owner. If you rent space, there must be someone who is responsible for the space, who rents it. it. As to street initiative, they are much more free, and so they are they become a platform uh, for testing, for piloting uh, uh, structured uh, um, art communities that can uh, function without any uh, leadership, without one main leader. And the second uh, important factor is lack of budget. All these um, initiatives um, are taken forward uh, with minimum uh, funds and um, it's also true about uh, such projects as Anna Khodorkovska project even though uh, it's no longer there, but uh, you probably noticed that her situation was very similar in terms of the budget, at least. So I would like to ask uh, all the panelists today whether these two factors can help art to enter this open environment, whether they um, strengthen the art statement. What can you say uh, based on your experience or maybe institutional, um, institutional um, art initiatives are much more powerful? So whoever wants to say something, I can start. It just came to my mind now that for me as an artist, it's very important to have my practice. And um, whether I have money or don't have money, uh, they are just conditions that help me implement something. But the most important thing is uh, uh, to focus on art and to draw attention to uh, art. So creating conditions for me to make art is the most important thing. And um, all these self-organized art initiatives are related to creating special environment that can help you do something. Well, you can have budget, sometimes you don't have a budget. And it will depend uh, on um, finding your ways around. So it all depends on uh, the conditions that are available. But it's really important for you to continue work, come up with different initiatives, uh, no matter uh, whether I have a budget or not. So it uh, sounds like um, an exercise machine or a simulator. Yes. 
and uh, I don't have uh, to evaluate every uh, thing I do, every performance I make. Uh, I might have forgotten uh, the uh, question you asked, but um, the quality of every work in particular is not as important as uh, a simulator that can help you function because uh, some uh, work can continue the ideas uh, that uh, came into being several years ago. It might be your own idea or some other's idea, and gradually it can uh, turn into a bigger project. So that's why uh, um, uh, I mentioned uh, a simulator or an exercise machine, which is uh, uh, all about simulation. On a socially open area, become this uh, simulator, and I mean uh, different uh, activities when the artists uh, address viewers directly, just because uh, the uh, uh, the view of uh, some other person is extremely important, but can such events attract uh, viewers? Because viewers uh, do not expect uh, to see art uh, with mm, not far from the Kremlin or in the zoo. Uh, he uh, would probably rather come uh, to a museum uh, to see the artist's uh, um, uh, opinion about this thing or another. Well, it depends on the viewer. Viewers are very different, uh, but, and it's not uh, as important for the artist and uh, his or her simulator. The most important thing is uh, to be part of the flow, because this flow is extremely important for an artist. Uh, if uh, we speak about uh, institutional um, role, then uh, institutions usually outline uh, the specific roles uh, uh, for the artist, whereas uh, when the artist uh, does um, uh, his own thing, uh, he becomes both a curator and um, uh, the uh, uh, executive of your own project, uh, and it uh, becomes very in, uh, interesting. Yeah. And um, this um, direct uh, in, uh, interrelation, uh, this direct uh, interaction with the viewer becomes uh, very valuable for an artist. I can compare this situation with Alexei Yorsh's exhibition uh, Occupy Mosque, Occupy Brain, when uh, it was uh, uh, rolling out uh, in front of the, gra uh, of the crowd uh, of the viewers that uh, uh, did not understand uh, uh, what was happening. They came to the boulevards because they heard about uh, the um, protests. But I guess um, the audience response can be completely different um, when they cannot expect any art uh, um, outside. Uh, so they can not recognize uh, uh, artifacts as uh, pieces of art. Do you think uh, uh, there is uh, also this uh, simulator in these processes? I think uh, it's true for many different kinds of practices. It's uh, the concept of um, uh, drive, it's um, uh, like a disease which is contagious, so uh, you have some sleepless nights, then uh, you uh, come up with ideas, uh, meet people to discuss your ideas, uh, and uh, uh, you get so excited and uh, you want to put your pants uh, 
uh, on a tree or you want to uh, put uh, uh, three uh, meter large posters uh, uh, in Vasilevsky Island in St. Petersburg. So it's very uh, important to establish these horizontal relationships. As to the viewers, uh, I already uh, mentioned uh, some uh, funny situations uh, with the guards and when we were putting the works uh, by Ilya Dolgov, uh, there was this blue um, fence around the construction site. Yes, it's true. We uh, have some um, uh, photos on the wall and uh, he showed these posters a couple of years in Excel format. So we were uh, putting uh, those uh, posters on the wall uh, and uh, it was very windy and the weather was bad uh, and suddenly there was a man uh, uh, who came out of the bushes and he wanted to know what we were doing here. Once we explained that we were artists and we were preparing the exhibition, he said, oh, so you're artists. Okay, now it's clear. And uh, I explained um, uh, the concept of um, our exhibition and he put down my uh, contact details, but he never called. And, um, um, uh, sometimes um, you can have crowds of people, about 70 people. Some people uh, took interest, would stop and chat to us. Uh, some drunk people, some people with guitar would uh, walk by and uh, would stop to see uh, what we were doing. So it all depends on the artist's uh, position. Uh, as long as you are open to the viewer, the viewer um, uh, becomes very open to you. It's like a mirror. Thank you. We are having um, some uh, representatives of Luch Initiative. Sergei, uh, could you share some of uh, your ideas with regard to our questions? Thank you very much. Unfortunately, I've never attended your lectures before. Speaking about uh, Luch, About um, a year ago, we created this uh, project that brought together different kind of artists. Uh, the, the, you, they are uh, both street artists and some um, artists that work for different galleries. So they uh, got together and they came up with their own projects uh, and uh, uh, show it uh, in some uh, places. Uh, uh, outside and so, in different places in the city without any permissions. And so we uh, uh, focused on some area, for example, from uh, metro station Barricadne to the Kremlin. So uh, there would be a line connecting this uh, two uh, uh, places. And so that's uh, what Luch means, a beam or a line connecting two points. So uh, the artists um, uh, checked uh, the places within that area and uh, there were several rooms uh, that um, uh, were developed uh, during that project and I guess uh, there were about 30 different art objects that uh, um, appeared uh, in different areas uh, including sculptures and installations and posters uh, and uh, we were putting one um, of the posters right next uh, to the um, metro station and uh, um, the policeman came up to us uh, and we had to pay 500 rubles so that they left us uh, uh, alone. Uh, so uh, there were quite many diff different uh, business centers in that area, some uh, public spaces uh, that uh, uh, perhaps uh, didn't mind uh, to show our art, art because uh, there was no protest uh, uh, in it. Uh, every artist uh, did what he or she wanted to do, but we didn't want to ask uh, for any permissions. Uh, we uh, 
um, didn't want uh, to approach to anyone uh, um, responsible uh, for the business center and asking uh, them uh, if we could uh, um, put uh, some installation there, just because uh, uh, they would probably uh, ask us to change some things. For example, uh, they would ask us uh, to change the color of the fence or to change other things. And we didn't want uh, uh, you know, any limitations. And that's why uh, we uh, wanted to make uh, our statements without any external influence. It's true that uh, some of our objects were quite uh, uh, close uh, to the Kremlin. And I remember some pianos uh, were brought uh, um, and uh, it was so heavy that we couldn't uh, uh, take it back. So uh, some people wanted to play music and they used those pianos. So we uh, have uh, discussed some of the consequences of uh, different uh, um, arts initiatives being so open. Uh, they could be performances, they could be exhibitions, and uh, of course uh, they are always very open uh, to the society. But uh, uh, there might uh, always be a threat uh, since uh, it is uh, the since all this art uh, uh, interact directly with the audience. For example, we heard uh, um, many uh, people mentioning that uh, they uh, uh, had to interact uh, with policemen at some point. Uh, for example, Tatiana Volkova mentioned that she had to give an explanation uh, and almost give a lecture to a policeman. Then uh, some of you uh, mentioned other funny cases. Uh, uh, We've just uh, heard that uh, the uh, Luch project participants had to pay 500 rubles. So I guess uh, it's going to be a very long uh, uh, list of uh, different situations when you had uh, to uh, talk to the policeman. Then uh, we saw some uh, photos uh, showing how the policemen were taking the whole exhibition away, and it can still be found on the internet. So every time uh, when we uh, discuss uh, art initiatives, uh, uh, they're always uh, uh, a question, how responsible can the art be when it is so vulnerable uh, between aesthetics and social character of art? So are there any uh, limitations that has to be taken into account? Well, uh, I'd love to share my own stories uh, related to um, interactions with uh, uh, policemen. For example, we have this uh, night uh, um, uh, uh, which, is, which takes place on the 8th of May. Uh, it's um, uh, Women's Historical Night and I remember that uh, we were taken to a police station and so uh, we discussed uh, uh, different kinds of art like Malevich's Black Square and Joconda and the policeman said that uh, if you you uh, love uh, the black square, then it probably means that you would never be able to appreciate uh, the uh, stars, uh, the smell of the trees. Uh, so it, it was almost a part of uh, educating activities for us uh, to explain uh, the value of art to the policeman. I would now uh, like uh, to ask Nikolai about Krasnodar. Uh, Krasnodar is not as big as uh, Moscow or St. Petersburg uh, um, because uh, Moscow and St. Petersburg are um, huge cities, so it's very easy for art to get lost. and. Um, the situation in Krasnodar is uh, quite uh, different, uh, and um, it's not by chance uh, that um, 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 you brought some military symbols uh, here as a present. Uh, 
So what can you uh, tell us about the interaction between the artists and uh, the police? Well, the most important thing is uh, that the artists uh, uh, do not uh, um, want any budget, so we don't uh, uh, claim um, to get any budget. That's the most important thing. Yes. For example, when we had uh, uh, the uh, booth um, for uh, Lonely Picket and the slogans uh, uh, like um, Putin should go to the Canary Islands, uh, um, give freedom uh, to the artists. So the artists uh, had uh, to have a very long um, had to uh, give uh, long explanations uh, uh, to the policemen what we were doing there. So it was uh, almost like a lecture, which was all about educating uh, policemen uh, uh, about contemporary art. And, uh, uh, the, the final words were, okay, you're doing a good thing, uh, uh, but please make sure uh, you don't do uh, something uh, uh, like um, Ukrainians do, just to make sure we don't have the same situation um, like Ukraine. So don't interfere with the budget because Alexander Tkachev has a huge um, agricultural um, complex and uh, uh, it's a huge area which is comparable to the area of France. Uh, we are uh, speaking about no man's land, but uh, in uh, uh, Kuban uh, we know uh, whose land it is. So all this land belongs to one and the same person who is the Minister of Agriculture at the moment. So we know uh, whose land it is, but uh, we don't make any claim to get uh, uh, to, to get uh, it uh, for example we might use uh, um, the parks uh, uh, for our installations for several days but after three or four days we give it back to the city so uh, we know whose land it is there um, was a gain uh, subcov uh, uh, gain so they controlled that that land but the most important thing is not just not to interfere uh, with the authorities not to interfere with the uh, budget uh, distribution and then you'll be fine your words reminded me of uh, of a story related to Leto group. Leto Pirvov uh, was uh, giving a performance on the Manesh Square. He uh, used some uh, pieces of garbage that he found uh, right there in the Manesh Square. So he put uh, this uh, phrase, contemporary art does not lie around. And uh, he used uh, cigarettes, he used uh, some packages. Uh, at some point, uh, uh, when there, there came a policeman and uh, he was a little bit disoriented because he had to chase some people and then he saw this uh, uh, sign uh, on the ground so he uh, uh, basically destroyed uh, that slogan and uh, uh, so that all those pieces of garbage uh, became garbage and uh, um, but it uh, uh, became even more beautiful I think uh, it was mentioned in one of the articles about contemporary art. Yes, that's true. I also wanted to make a comment. Sometimes it's very difficult uh, to uh, identify uh, what your, role, your main role is, whether you're an artist, uh, whether you're just a citizen of this country, whether you're a father or a son, all these roles. Uh, get together and uh, um, you uh, feel a crisis uh, of the mixture of the roles that you have to play. So 
I don't know if you can uh, uh, detach yourself from uh, these roles, uh, but it's a natural uh, uh, thing, uh, this uh, cascade of different uh, identities. And um, I have to say that we have uh, rich traditions uh, of art uh, outdoors, for example, Aptarte in the natural uh, um, environment. Uh, in 1983 uh, that um, um, was held outside the bulldozer exhibition and many others. So whenever uh, art goes beyond the studios uh, and beyond uh, the uh, private uh, collections, it uh, uh, carries uh, on a very important uh, mission to uh, get some message across, uh, but whether the audience understands the message. Would you like to say something? I have an opinion that uh, the principle of uh, the gallery space, this uh, uh, ubiquitous uh, white cube, uh, is living its last days. Uh, because whenever you see art inside a, a white cube, Uh, the uh, person automatically uh, identifies uh, pieces of art uh, when he see sees it uh, against the white background to be art. And uh, uh, let's say I uh, uh, put this notebook uh, into the uh, gallery space, uh, everybody would recognize it as a piece of art, whereas if I put it somewhere outside to the street, uh, not many people would be able to uh, uh, recognize it as a piece of art. And uh, I guess uh, um, you will need much more efforts, uh, uh, you will need much more resources if you want uh, to put uh, a piece of art uh, in a gallery space. So personally for me it's much more uh, valuable uh, to uh, make art and uh, to see art outside uh, rather than uh, in the gallery. It sounds like you want uh, to withdraw from the dialogue uh, with the audience. So you want to aestheticize the reality. So let's imagine a person um, walking down the street and uh, he sees this pants uh, hanging from the tree. No one knows why uh, those pants uh, are hanging there. Well, it depends uh, uh, on uh, how uh, ready you are. So, for example, the person that visits art galleries often would um, uh, recognize that it must be um, a piece of art. And uh, uh, referring back to Occupy uh, exhibition, uh, every piece of art uh, was recognizable as art uh, because uh, uh, there were some uh, pads uh, um, with uh, uh, drawings and pictures and um, no matter where uh, those pads were located, uh, they were telling that this was art and we came uh, uh, to get certain, a certain message across. Yes, I was thinking about Occupy exhibitions uh, a lot, and I think this uh, was um, uh, just uh, a, a special kind of work that uh, um, uh, made uh, this uh, um, format uh, uh, important, but uh, sometimes art uh, can uh, dissolve uh, in the environment, and uh, so in this case it would uh, um, get uh, a different message. It would have a different message. Speaking about art in a public space, it's true, it needs some framework. Uh, 
uh, and um, based on the phantom exhibition example, many um, the participants uh, uh, thought about uh, Stas Irshov and Gleb Savitsky's exhibition, um, and uh, these uh, guys uh, were walking around the city, found some ready-made objects and marked uh, them uh, in some way or other, just like Zip Group uh, in the factory. So in our case, uh, with Phantom Exhibition, the uh, artist's commentary was uh, very important. And uh, it uh, could be related to uh, what inspired him to do the, um, some um, pieces of art uh, and, of course, uh, 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 the uh, messages that uh, the artists gave uh, were also important because uh, this uh, dialogue with the audience uh, was um, something that uh, the artists wanted. I can see Nastya Ryabova, who, who has joined us. And um, we had a project uh, called Bolshe Chem uh, DST. Uh, so we had more than uh, 10 exhibitions, more than 10 artists in different spaces, including uh, some institutions' spaces. So it was a great project. Nastya, could you share of could you share some of your opinions? Well, uh, I think uh, Valia Fetisov participated in that project, and, and as well as Varvara Gevorgizova, Nastya Potemkina, and uh, Vanya uh, Brashkin, and Vlad Kruczynski, and uh, Maxim Spivakov, and uh, Vladik Shapovalov. Maxim Spivakov. Lena Martinova. So there were more than 10 people. And it's true that uh, we had 10 sites. So we changed the emphasis. And it was really important for us uh, to have quite many people participating in that project. Yes, uh, we had Fabrica, Excel Gallery, and other sites. Also some uh, private studios uh, um, were our sites. Some of them were more commercial, some of them were less commercial. So uh, some shared uh, uh, some resources with us. Uh, so we tried to, to uh, uh, collect as uh, much as we could uh, in terms of means. We are trying to systematize uh, uh, all these stories and uh, uh, one of the expressions uh, that we're using is uh, institutional uh, trace. Uh, I just uh, wanted to give you this example because it was a horizontal project. I think it's not exactly an institutional trace. I would change this phrase. I wouldn't say that uh, uh, it was uh, the uh, institution uh, that um, made uh, an impact. I would say that uh, um, uh, it was uh, an opposite uh, process because uh, we, uh, uh, the artists, made uh, a bigger impact, so left uh, uh, their trace. And we had just 10,000 rubles, so it's uh, not, uh, it was not a big budget. Uh, Anastasia presented her projects in our uh, open system as uh, discussions, uh, her project Supostate, but it's not my personal project. It was an, our collective project, uh, just like artist collectives. 
because uh, the uh, story of uh, um, those uh, uh, projects uh, uh, was related to your name in uh, particular. Not uh, always. It's just uh, some uh, uh, names uh, are remembered better. That's it. Do you understand me? Not quite. Sometimes one and the same story told by different uh, uh, participants uh, uh, creates uh, um, an entirely different story uh, or showing different aspects of the same story, so you can trust it. And um, I'm very happy to see you here. I'm happy that you joined us. We are going uh, to have another meeting in two weeks and uh, um, have our final discussion. I would like to draw your attention to the fact uh, that uh, we make some notes and uh, uh, put them um, on this wall on the right. Sometimes we put down some provocative uh, questions uh, and uh, trying to uh, engage uh, um, everyone into the dialogue, uh, trying to find answers that could be helpful for self-organizations uh, in Russia. Well, there was um, a question, who are you working for? Um, uh, when you uh, go outside and uh, bring uh, your art uh, to the streets. For example, whenever we work with the galleries, uh, usually the curators select your works. And uh, so the artist becomes uh, an employee, no matter how beautiful uh, the exhibition is, uh, the curator uh, makes uh, the artists uh, uh, do many things uh, as they want, uh, whereas uh, when the artists go outside to the street, uh, uh, they can formulate their statements themselves without uh, the help of a curator. And uh, it doesn't really bother him whether the curators understand him or not. He and uh, it doesn't really bother him whether all the passers-by understand him or not. Maybe some uh, uh, won't understand, but some others will. For example, there's Farsh exhibition, and uh, there's no selection whatsoever. You can exhibit anything you want. Uh, you can come and uh, uh, meet different people and just uh, show art. Or you can continue uh, your life uh, in the street. Uh, you know, one of the organizers of Farsh project uh, announced uh, uh, the project uh, called SHARF, so there's a uh, wordplay. Those people that initiated uh, that project uh, wrote, uh, according to the um, uh, SHARF project result, the best works uh, would be exhibited in the best uh, um, places, in the right places or appropriate places. So it turns out this hurricane, or just the whirlwind of Farsh, was actually aimed at certain right, correct places, and there were some creators dict uh, dictating, yes. But then, later on, that's right, on this well-fertilized soil, something new is growing, you know. A new sharp at the Mariro there, and sharp is Yuri Kunin. Well, they're communicating, but they're different people. And I know that in this event, known as sharp, well, uh, there, there's a certain connection established with QEB, the project, and there's a certain prompt or hint to the following of the events which shall harmonize, harmonize the whole group of participants. Well, 
well, in South, well, the group where Marina was teaching, uh, she is very kind of smooth and soft person, like Sharp, which is standing for Scarf. So that was the group not participating in Sharp, but these were institutional students uh, studying under Marina. Yes, I know. Uh, what do you mean? I'm just trying uh, to argue Alexei's viewpoint a certain drive and strive for liberty, for not control sites when there are no controllers nor supervisors, but also there's a risk of having no viewers and visitors. Well, Farsh is known pretty well because it's broadly announced on Facebook and so on. But but as for the root of Phantom Exhibition, how many people know about location of Yama Gallery, for example? And it's another story of what Maxim Prikotnev said while having a talk with Maxim and Natasha. Uh, namely that, uh, I'll say it in a simpler uh, way, so there's a certain marking of certain places. One story to make an exhibition uh, within Kremlin walls, another story to do it near the pond in Saritsina Park. Others, so a certain concentration of power and uh, social uh, focal points. And there are also uh, areas or places belonging to the bygone power and uh, forces even if they belong to some Karabas marquee. Well, but art is also calling for different places. But, you know, by visiting uh, Moscow galleries, I don't see the public uh, utterly different from those who go from gallery to gallery. Basically, all the same people. I don't take into account uh, major institutions uh, with uh, limited PR capabilities, which may attract lots of people, but uh, talking about the average Moscow gallery, the same people, same visitors are attending. It's the same circle of artists. And there is no special uh, profile of a visitor from the street that you can find. I cooperate with A3 gallery, mostly well it's attended by uh, artists. And the events arranged well, sometimes you have to uh, almost forcefully, you know, chase uh, visitors. That's why many of such, you know, free functions last for one day because, well, they can't lost, they can't live more than one day. And you know, just basically, the experience, the global experience, does that as an effect. But basically, talking about a viewer. Should it be a policeman to whom you have to explain the meaning of a black quadruple or some old lady who should be explained that it's not propaganda of some evil or bad no intentions? Or is it uh, maybe just a visitor coming to a gallery and not always a dialogue with unprepared, untreated uh, viewer? leads to something good. Well, we remember also in all the cases in Perm, where, you know, exhibits fell victim of some vandals. And some artists very well know that uh, sometimes an event cannot be, you know, published on the Facebook, and that also the fact is that majority of spectators are on the social networks, not in the galleries. And if people go to some um, events, where they can see something exceptional or something to be talked with the friends. And mostly people just follow the Facebook. So we're dealing mostly with the uh, new social media phenomenon, and that's just great because it's already a new concept of media art. And uh, most people, well, like Orwell was saying about, you know, 15 minutes of glory given by TV now. It's not TV by the internet. Well, also, I think much depends on what exactly 
an artist wants just to create something and then to spit in the well and let it just live on by itself or maybe in the process to communicate with the spectator and the street is a perfect uh, ground for such communication. It might be well performed on some kind of street art act and then the artist has a much better opportunity to bring over the idea, the message to the speaker. Or it might be just a pair of pens pen hanging and somebody can interpret it as some, some kind of a garbage. And for somebody it may be some, you know, uh, intellectual push. Or just a pair of boots hanging on the, uh, on the wire. So, uh, it's bringing out a person from this linear division. Here's gallery, that means here's art. Here's the street, that means it's just, you know, daily life. I think when gal art is stepping out of gallery and getting into the street, it's very important to assess properly well the value in the meaning of the space. And if it's a fight, it's better to fight one on one. And I think it's much better to deal one on one with a spectator. Uh, and also reverse situation when you have lots of spectators and one person on the other side, it's another, you know, uh, situation of fight. Yes, I remember a story just to this three, uh, that was an uh, exhibition of avant-garde artists well called Battle Fighting for Art and one word really uh, irritated visitors of Pizza Park. It was Mike Rochelle's work, huge cardboard uh, uh, sheet, and it was called the column of kefir, 321 grams of fat. And there's a picture, a photo, where Rochelle is explaining to a militianer and visitors the meaning of this column for the uh, national economy. Of course, such things happen and last only one day and these are very ephemeral uh, stories but also for the sake of self-organizing of the stories which we follow to a certain level of self-isolation well the first level is a private place or on a private dwelling where you know admission is not allowed for the outsiders the second level is a rented place where the walls and laws of Microsoft Sosum and then uh, uh, the site of the city street open for everyone and everything. On the other hand, there is an invisible space of some kind of uh, art action in the country. I wouldn't take the example of you know to fight for the art but there was apt art in nature exhibition when the works were exhibited on the middle by some uh, bog like 20 kilometers of nearest railway station where nobody can physically get to Otherwise, that was a kind of a catacomb approach, what Piotr Zhukov was speaking about in our first section, about, namely about the art existing out of the field of uh, spectator scope. And there is a group called Art Zahvat, uh, which is absolutely hermetic, otherwise creating exhibitions not for all not for everyone but still it's some kind of a local group now it's not functioning anymore i think they were active for half a year or a year and they were arranging exhibitions some abandoned mm, places not the first one was near tretikov gallery then the next one they did it somewhere in the park at the outskirts and they expect no 
visitors at all, well, the artists gather very quickly, make some installations and performance and just leave. Well, I don't know if you might have some questions, dear friends, concerning our today's conversations. Well, frankly, it's not a question, but I'd like just to uh, speak a little bit. Uh, I think that, you know, placement of any object of art on the street definitely leads to its, you know, publication uh, on the Internet. And uh, most of the object, you know, implemented on the street, I could see only on the Internet in the form of uh, pictures, photography. Otherwise, the artist had been working not with the art, but basically was working with the phot uh, uh, photos which later on are published. And these projects, which you were talking about in the abandoned places, uh, we'd never hear of them if somebody didn't show them on the web. Well, this is not a way, and that's why not by chance I recall the Collective Nizistio, uh, Collective uh, Action Group. But I'm really interested, if we have this kind of conventional, conditional viewer, and may I recall just and refer to one of the activities of CAD, it was called Ball, when some kind of um, uh, bunch of balloons put into the cover, uh, were thrown into the river, was floating in the river, so eventually disappeared from the site. So there is no authorities and there are no spectators, but we assume, we suspect that it still might be somewhere there. And the street acts like phantom exhibitions or like exhibitions. They derive from the same sources that sense dispatches art to live uh, somewhere where it may be not even recognized. And the documentation is the same story which we've been talking about with Nastiriabo. Well, dear friends, if we had covered today's agenda may I thank you all for coming and still I want to invite you to come here again next Saturday which will be dedicated to the joint projects implemented by the artists jointly with creators and institutions thank you very much please come again